<laughs> hey everyone, I'm your host, Marcus Norman of Jitterman Style Podcast Show. And today I have a power family coming to the show. These two, I found them and I had to beg them to be on the show because they are that <laughs> fantastic. Oh my gosh, you won't want to miss one second. These two are spilling the tea. Not all the tea, some of the tea, because you got to check them out for yourself. But you won't want to miss one second of what they have to say. Here we go. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today I have the incredible Miss Tiffany Powell and Anthony Powell with Ambulance Academy. They are the coolest siblings you'll ever, ever meet. And I've fallen absolutely in love with them ever since day one. I follow them on social media, all social media, because they are helping us, we, us do better and start our own ambulance service business where they they help people start and run profitable private ambulance services through consulting and software these two are the truth miss tiffany has a bachelor's degree from florida atlantic university whoop 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 and has been in the private ambulance industry since 2013 killing the game. She took the leap of faith in 2016 when she started her very own private ambulance service. And her brother has a bachelor's degree from Miles College and a master's degree in information technology. Kudos to you because I'm in this industry. I'm studying. I'm learning. It is no joke. These two are the brains and power behind Ambulance Academy. And so I can't hold these two back any longer. Help me welcome to the stage the incredible Anthony and Tiffany Powell. <laughs> man, that was great, man. That I couldn't awesome. have written a better Welcome. <laughs> welcome to the show. I love y'all. I love y'all. Welcome. How are you? You're great. Oh, How are good, you? Man. This is dope. You guys look incredible. The matching <laughs> t-shirts. I have we all black. <laughs> And that was not planned, y'all. We did not plan this. They just look really, really good. And I thank you guys for making time for being here today. This is fantastic. You guys are really changing the game. Um, you are in a specific industry, right? You're not in multi-level marketing. This ain't no scam. You guys are the real deal. And so how did you guys find the ambulance service niche? How did you guys get into this industry? and discover that there was a need within your own community. Help right. us, please. Well, it's a funny story. Um, I'll start with myself yeah. and then <laughs> Anthony can um, tell his story too. But my story is I was in a job that I was unfulfilled in. And so I quit that job and I had some time um, to kind of spend, I guess, time to um, kind of explore things that I really wanted to spend my time in my career doing. And so long story short, I had a friend that had a friend that was opening their own ambulance service. And I think they had already opened and they needed help. And so she's like, my friend, she can do anything. She, <laughs> you know, she, she's a like systems person. She's an office person. She can help you guys. So I think they were going through an audit. I helped them through the audit. Um, they were firefighters. So they knew the patient care side of things, but they really needed a lot of help like get in the office and order and all that kind of stuff. And so from there, once I got them through the audit, I was able to kind of win their trust. And after a while, I was running their business for them, um, hiring, firing, um, marketing, you know, just all the things behind the scenes. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I still love it. So that's kind of how I fell into it. And I mean, for me, uh, she started this business when I was in college. So, you know, I was definitely cheering on and everything like that, but I didn't know much about it. And even after I graduated, you know, I didn't know much about what she was doing outside of the struggles because when she started at first, she was struggling. So she called me, <laughs> brother, I'm stressed right now. I'm on the side of the road and my ambulance is broken down. I'll call you back. <laughs> so I remember a lot of moments like that, but outside of that, you know, but fast forward a few years, like 
you look up and you know we don't really talk about money and everything like that but you look up and my sister's like we're going to take the whole family on vacation and spending mm -hmm. thousands of dollars on a mansion for us to all be in and stuff like that i'm like okay wait a minute sis <laughs> 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 what, what, how much are you really making right. how much are you really making so um fast forward to 2020 COVID hit you know and it was like uh uh you know employee shortages and stuff like that so now uh, in the state of georgia they allowed for certain people it was like a state of emergency uh, yeah. for the ambulance space so they allowed you know certain people to kind of uh take a certification it was a driver certification and that allowed us to kind of uh, get on the trucks and start driving for her she actually needed the help so um mm -hmm. myself and her husband uh took the course just to help her out it was and a one day course it was right? like it was like a one day course yeah. a one day course who so was able to actually drive the ambulance uh, in this state of emergency period which is not the case anymore but um so like the second day i was like tiff like we should just start another one like what do you want to do it was a joke but you know uh, we actually pursued it and, and that's how i got into the space yep so that's the story mm -hmm. i'm sticking to it <laughs> I get, I get, I get the vibes right. So I got chills right now, y'all. I got chills right now because you guys are legacy building. You guys are doing something that you, you, and you were smart enough, brother. Even though you, you said it, you, you, you said it is like, man, I'm. You're working in corporate America. You guys had the wisdom to transition and do it yourselves because you knew. I think you guys knew you could do it better, and so you did. And then when you combine, that's when. And brother, you were smart. You saw you saw your sister traveling and doing these things. You were like, "Hold up, what's going on over here? Let me see what's really happening on this side of the world." Yep. And so, but you touch on a very particular thing. You had some skills. You had skills that you both brought to the table, right. and you offered those skills to others to help them get started in this industry. What skills should someone have when getting into this business? What should they work on prior to? Um, because you talk about this on your Instagram page. They drop nuggets on the Instagram page, y'all. If y'all ain't checking them out, you need to check them out. But yes. what skills should someone have before getting started and before contacting you? Well, I would definitely say mindset. Yeah. That's something that can be developed, but definitely a mindset of getting it done um, and not giving up until you get a yes. Like the mindset of finding the solution, not focusing on the problem. Yeah. Um, so mindset is number one, I would think. Yep, sure. Um, two, I would say definitely to make sure you have your credit in order, you have capital. It varies by state, but um at least fifty thousand or more to get started. What would you say? Yeah. Listen. Um, um and I think another thing would probably be uh, this you said the skill set. You said the skill set before reaching out to us, correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah, just just like you said, you know, resiliency, um, like she mentioned, and uh, yeah, definitely having the mindset of, hey, this is like an actual business. This isn't. I know yeah. today on social media, you know, everyone talks about, hey, let's start a business today, and you tomorrow you'll be a millionaire, or yeah, whatever the case may be, or start traveling tomorrow. <laughs> like no, the ambulance company is it's, it's a complex business to start, and it's a complex business to run. So you just have to have kind of a higher level uh perception on the space before getting into it because it's going to take a process to start yeah. and then once you start up even though we're, we're going to be able to help you and give you all the systems and all of the games it's going to be a lot easier it's just a long process so it those is. are kind of the mindset and the skill yeah. sets that you may have before and then i would say everything else can be taught yeah. um everything else is can be learned but i think you know just having a a, a great attitude and having patience i would say sure. is that's a, good a major thing yeah. making sure you have the patience yeah. um to yeah. endure Mm -hmm. um, even the startup process, but then once you get started, it doesn't just, you know, you happen don't, overnight. yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So just having the patience, mm -hmm. um, and the, and the, um, grit, I would say to yeah. see yourself through to the next step. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And you, you guys, I would, I would say one more thing, have an open mind because too many people will try and come in to what you guys have already mastered and try and think they know it all, right? So keep an open mind and, and follow instruction, follow their instruction, right? They're giving you step-by-step -step processes and they're walking you through so you don't hit the road bumps like earlier mentioned, right? Like being being down, broken down <laughs> on the side of the road with, right. with just your ambulance truck. And it's like, well, if the emergency truck can't get to me, I'm, I'm right. messed up. So, right. <laughs> so that's cool. That is super, super dope. What are some things I should focus on first? So credit, I got credit from what you said, the foundations, the mindset, 
Um, but what it, what tangible items should I um, expect to? Because you teach something that was unique. You talk about um, instead. Of, I think me, Marcus. I think I need to purchase a truck first. But yeah. you actually, you guys teach us something different. So help us. What would I need to focus on first? So, well, you know, I mean, there's so many ways you can take this. Um, yeah. So, like, if you have the credit, you know, obviously we said it's about 40 to 60K to get started. And obviously you want to have access to that capital. Mm -hmm. um, you want to have a community as well. Like, you want, in this space, like I said, it's complex. So you want to have, make sure you have, like, another ambulance company that's local that you can kind of turn to, to yeah. for resources and tools and things of that nature. You want to have that. But as far as like, you know, if you have those things in place, something tangible, um, basically identifying basically where you want to open up and start at. I mean, that's right. a big thing for a lot of businesses in the ambulance space. You want to be able to kind of gauge your market um, and see where you want to start at. Do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I would say um, definitely a, a very quick thing that people can begin to do is kind of, um, like you say, engage your market. You can go out to dialysis centers and just people watch, or in this case, ambulance <laughs> watch and you can kind of see how the people present themselves in that area are they showing up in unprofessional uniforms or are they in a uniform at all um <laughs> what their trucks look like yeah, you yeah. know just and that alone is just a great um option to say hey okay i see them failing in this area they yeah. look sloppy that usually means they're probably late mm -hmm. you know it could mean that they're treating their patients maybe not so well either. Mm -hmm. um, so those are um, areas that, you know, you can probably slot in and um, get some quick patients, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Another thing would be to, um, I would say, determine, like, if you want to go ahead and begin to purchase your supplies. So a lot of people would think that, hey, I need to go buy this ambulance right now. <laughs> yeah. But you wouldn't want to buy the ambulance, start paying on, start paying a note on it, having to pay the insurance on it. Because mm -hmm. once you get it, you have to get it insured. Yep. So you're basically um, sitting adding, on those notes. You're adding costs, adding to, your costs to your bottom line for yeah. your startup. So yeah. we say to you know do all the legwork first. You have to get a medical director. You have to get a pharmacy um, on staff with you. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that you need to do first before you go out and get that ambulance. So. We would say to you know figure out what that looks like in your state yeah. first. That can be found on usually the Department of EMS and Trauma mm -hmm. site on the on the state site um, that you reside in or that you want to open up in. So I would say to find out what those things are first and start with the small things. And then once you have all those things in place and like physically in your possession, then you go out and get your truck because that's one of the last things you would really need to do. Yeah. So so much yes yeah, so much There's so More much <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the beauty of what you guys do is so important you have ambulance academy we're going to touch on that after this quick commercial break you guys stay tuned stay with us we'll be right right back if you're looking for a reliable professional trucking and logistics service you've come to the right place Musa Trucking is a veteran-owned and operated premier transportation provider that can help with all of your trucking and logistics needs. Musa is revolutionizing the trucking industry through strategic partnerships, the development of core personnel, and the use of cutting-edge technology. Our inventory system ensures that cargo ends up divided into the right trucks and reaching the correct destination. Our drivers are dedicated to transporting goods efficiently and safely. Contact us today to get started by visiting the website on the screen or by calling 757-756-5246. We are back and we have the incredible, amazing Miss. Tiffany and Anthony Powell, siblings, running this awesome business. And they're teaching. They're spilling the tea here on the Gentleman's Style Podcast show about Ambulance Academy and how you can start your own ambulance business. Woo! Love it, love it, love it. So tell us, um, you touched on this 
what are the, the, the initial things people should expect? And, and that's a, I love that, that tip that you shared earlier. If you guys missed that, go back, scroll back, and check them out. But you guys are talking about instead of focusing on a truck, now you got a car note or a vehicle note or business note, and you may not be up and running yet. So yeah. you need to get your supplies. You need to get your team together. What else can people expect when signing up for Ambulance Academy? What 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 are they? What should they expect when they're going to get out of it? Well, I'll start first. Yeah. I think a major thing is I'll just back up and say when I first got started in the space, I googled, I called, I reached out. Mm -hmm. Nobody was helping. There's no real information online even now. Ten years later um that is valuable to anybody that's starting their own ambulance service and so i think and also with other ambulance service owners i don't know if they feel a threat <laughs> in their area when you know someone else is calling and um just needing some help and so people are just not really willing to share yeah. much information at all and so i think the major thing that they will be getting is community and yeah. people that have been through these things it's not just us we have you know, other people in our network that we are helping, who are helping us, that are, you know, wanting to share as much knowledge as they can as well. So I think the network of people that they'll be able to plug into and ask all the questions to have 24-7 access to, I think yeah. that is a major gem. Um, and then just not only that, not only the resources that they will be able to connect them to, but also just the confidence. I think when I yeah. first got started, I was, I felt so inadequate, even <laughs> though I had been in the space prior to, I was working in the space, um, as like an administrator, but I, I've never been an EMT. I hadn't up until that point, up until opening my own. And so I think I just felt that, you know, I didn't belong. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I felt defeated most days mm -hmm. in the beginning. And so just having, that person in your ear, like just being your cheerleader, mm -hmm. um, letting you know that it'll get better. Hey, we all went through it. You know, hopefully you can skip some of the things, <laughs> the negative things that we went through, mm -hmm. you know, so just having that, that network and, you know, people behind you that are yeah, rooting that, for you, cheering you on and sharing yeah. um, pertinent resources. Yeah, that clarity, like she said, is huge, you know, because if you go to your state's website right now <laughs> to look up the requirements of starting an ambulance service, it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. And it's like for some, I think we were looking at the state of, I believe it was, was Texas or Mississippi mm -hmm. or something the other day trying to help a student. And it was just like, just kept scrolling. You keep scrolling. Yeah, so it can, be, have, overwhelming. It can yeah. be very daunting, very overwhelming. So you get that clarity with us. You get that sense of direction with us. And, you know, even though it's a lot, you know, we've been through it, you know, so we're able to help you with that. And just simple things like, you know, how to get an insurance agent or how to yeah. get proper insurance for not only your truck, but also your business if you drop right. a patient or whatever. So, um, you can't Google State Farm, hey, or you can't call Jake State Farm. Can I get it from my truck? That. You can't do that. So you have to have a broker, and you know we are, we give you access to that. We give you access to um, where we buy our actual trucks from. We can get access. access we give you access to you know where we get our you know, financing for our trucks, and mm -hmm. just so on and so forth. So you're kind of getting like a um, the business on a platter to you. Yeah. So um, ambulance service in the box. And uh, ambulance <laughs> service in a box. So and not only that, like you're getting the systems that you know my sister and you know myself have created to help you run that business efficiently so yes. that's even more important to help you get it started a lot of people can get kind started. of manage their way to getting it yeah. started but after they get it started it's like okay now i have to deal with these patients i have to deal with hiring people i have to deal with managing patient documentation calling facilities to get contracts so there's just so many other things um so a lot of people if they're not running their business the correct way they go out of business very quickly in the ambulance yeah. space. But if you have those um, resources in place, those tools in place, um, you could be, you know, like my sister, you know, super successful helping her husband and her brother get on. And like, we both run our ambulance business from home now, if anything, <laughs> if that, you know, so yeah. Yeah, you're getting a lot. What I what I see with you two is number one goals. <laughs> I see goals, <laughs> but I also see you guys give, right? You guys oh. give a lot. <laughs> And just like what you said, you you experienced a lot of negativity, no support, no one you could call on, which there is power in mentorship, y'all. Sure. There is a lot of power with these two when it comes to step by step. Um, I, I forget the statistic, um, the number, but it, it saves millions. You Most people will be like, well, I can't get with them because I can't afford them. 
you need to flip that mindset and say, how much are they saving you? How much potential losses are you are skipping because they're helping you along that way? Having a mentor pays for itself. And, ambul and that's what Ambulance Academy is. And that's what these two are doing. So I need, whoever's listening, when you get, hey, you guys really need to change that mindset and connect with a powerful team like this, because you're not going to get that. Just like they said, um, any, you can go to any industry, right? You go to any industry and you're not going to get the help that you need. Um, mentors want 50,000, 800,000, you know, right. just to learn, right? Yeah. You, 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 can I take you for some coffee? Whatever the case may be. So that's, that's what I hear. Round of applause for these two again, y'all. <laughs> I got a bonus round. I got a bonus round. Hear that? Got to get the sirens in there because this is Ambulance <laughs> Academy. Um, bonus round is, let's get to the money. What oh. kind of money can people expect from this $50,000 to $85,000 to $100,000 investment? What What's the different ways? Are you guys dealing with insurance providers, the government, or individuals? Because I have a heart. I I and I'm, I'm not saying you guys don't, because you guys have a very ethical and moral compass, and you lead with that, and it shows in all your work. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel bad. I would feel horrible picking up someone, and they're, you know, they're, we're in a recession, we're in a pandemic, money is tight, stimulus isn't flowing. How, how, how do you make money in this industry? So I'm glad you asked, yeah. Marcus. I'm glad you asked. So. Um, our number one payer is the government via Medicare. Um, also Medicaid, we get paid through, so Medicare is federal, Medicaid is state usually. So those are our number one payers. So although our customers are our patients, the paying party is usually their insurance companies. And so if not Medicare, Medicaid, then we also are paid directly um, from Blue Cross Blue Shield, Humana, Aetna, you name it. And yep. so that is the beauty of this. It is truly recession proof mm -hmm. because we know, and our model is dialysis. So we know that every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Mr. Norman yeah. will go <laughs> dialysis um, at a set time. And, you know, he's going to go from home to dialysis and then he's going to come back from dialysis to home. Mm -hmm. So we get to build the insurance per each each way basically. Yeah. And so that's the beauty in it. Like the sky's the limit. So, you know, someone could be like, Hey, I just want to have a small service. I thought I wanted a small service when I first got started. Um, because there is a lot that goes into it, but I'm like, Hey, I need to, I want to buy a new house. So that means I need to add more trucks and, you know, therefore add more patients so that I can build more to the government essentially. And so really, truly like you can make, as much as you want, yeah. Really and truly, as as it's just it, it. It really depends on scale, like systems. Once you yeah. have your foundational systems mm -hmm. in place, you can scale it as highly yeah. and as much as you you like to. So yeah. absolutely, and just to kind of go a little deeper to provide the audience like an exact number <laughs> that yes, you can that you can make. You know, that's I don't know. That's a good insight. That's what that's, that's what matters. But um, as far as exact numbers, like we like to allocate um eight trips per truck yes. per day. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you can have multiple trucks, you know, running per day, but per day, if you have one truck um, prorated over a month, it should be somewhere around 38000 32 to $38,000. You can make revenue on that one truck running mm -hmm. six days a week. I don't want to break down the entire math. I'm not a human calculator, so I can't, <laughs> but we do have- You good. <laughs> we do have a no. I, we did a video on Instagram and it's like, if you go to our Instagram page, Ambulance Academy, we break it all down for you. Um, mm -hmm. So you, we do it per trip you know, per day, per week, per month. So you'll get the actual numbers, Yeah. but it comes out to around $38,000 a day. Obviously you just have to pay your employees. A month. Have to pay, yeah, a, a month. 30, <laughs> oh Lord, no way. Per <laughs> yeah, if it was $38,000 a month, I'll be on the island with oh, Elon, a day. Yeah, Elon <laughs> Musk, I'll be a day. But no, it's $38,000 a month. And uh, you know, obviously you still have to pay your employees. You still have to pay your insurance. Sure. You still have to pay gas, sure. all no. sorts of yeah. overhead gas. I mean, yeah, truck yeah. no. But obviously if you look at, if you have like, five trucks, if you have two trucks, three trucks, you know, you can easily get to six figures a month um, uh, running an ambulance service. Um, quite so easily. Quite easily. So it just depends, like my, like my sister said, if you have a good foundation, if you understand your business model, that's another thing that 
um, I've noticed uh, by a lot of people trying to get into the space, they don't really understand the business model. So they're trying to do events here. They're trying to do contracts here. They're trying to do wheelchair band here. They're, right. trying to, they're trying to they're trying do everything. It's like you have to have a foundation first, build on that, um, get, get some predictable income, and then you can kind of venture out and figure right. out where else you want to kind of expand and offer your service because there's a lot of ways to offer service and make money yeah. if you have an ambulance company. But long story short, yeah, if you have that foundation, if you're building on top of the Dallas's model, um, you can easily scale to six figures a month if you have three or four trucks on. Yep. 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 Love it. Love it. And so I stalk these two, y'all. Um, <laughs> so I already brought up on the screen their Instagram page where he breaks down the dollar for dollar um, oh. breakdown. So eight transport slash a day, Bait rate base rate of 175 per transport, and you can see all of this on the screen again. They are very, very giving. You're not going to get this anywhere else, um, unless you sign up for Hermelis Academy or check them out <laughs> on their Facebook, their Instagram page. But I stalk them, so I, I want to bring you guys, my audience, the real deal. And these two are the real deal. So here are the numbers on the screen for you guys to see, and so that's super, super powerful. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that, Marcus. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's how we roll on the Gentleman <laughs> Style Podcast show. Uh, I wanted to, can this business be run passively or how involved? I, I imagine, and with any business, you got to be involved, but you got to get the know how. And Mr. Anthony, brother, you have a very powerful story about a friend that did the same thing, but didn't know his business and, yeah. and, and unfortunately had an unfortunate end. But can this business be run passively? I want to I want to kind of stay there. Or do I have to, you know, is there, I have to be there. I have to have certain certifications or licenses. Or do I not need those things? I mean, that's a loaded question. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize. So, to answer your question, yes, it can be. Semi, I don't want to use the word passive. Passive, passive. passive, I think of like... Like real estate is passive for me. Yeah. I know today everybody thinks in social media, they think that everything can be run passively. That's everyone's dream, but that's not the case, especially no. in this business, but you're good. You need to definitely, if you're not present, you need to have someone that is basically you um, that can be present. In my opinion, yeah, that's following systems that you've created, right? You know, and that you know, right. because that, if that person is extracted from the business, you're going to be like the guy that you're alluding to right. on my Instagram. That is like, okay, that person who was just my manager quit. And I don't know I how to run my business, right. and like you got to shut your business down, and that's what happened. Right. But yeah. so, in terms of for us, I can speak from my personal point of view. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, I'm. I, I require it for myself to get my own EMT license, state of Georgia EMT license. I went to school. I wanted to do that for myself because I wanted to really understand and know the ins and outs of like the clinical side of things. I understood how to run the business, but I didn't really understand like the clinical side. And so I'm like, if I'm going to be having my own employees and training them, mm -hmm. I want to make sure I'm not relying on, you know, another person's expertise yep. that might not be, you know, expertise at all. Um, I don't want to rely on somebody else to, you know, explain how to do things in my business. So my personal philosophy, I I, I know how to do everything in my business. Um, so that way, no one feels that I need them too much. Um, or, and I don't mean to say it like that, but, you know, just nowadays, people are different. Employees are different. They want to, like, hold things over your head. So in my opinion, I'm like, you know, if there's any kind of thing that may arise and they leave, I can I can still step in and run my business if need be. And so, but yeah, so I became an EMT. I became everything that my business needed needed it to be in mm -hmm. the at the time it needed it to happen. And then after I think I've got like five patients, consistent patients, I was able to get off the truck. And I haven't really been consistently on the truck since. And that was back in 2018. Um, and yeah, I think that, so I, I, I'm usually at home. I don't ever really come to the office. <laughs> yeah. Um, my employees hear my voice. They usually don't see me. Um, if Tiffany goes to the office. It's a bad day. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so it's so not, it's not good to see. You. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it can be done. Um, but then again, like, you know, she's been in this space for 
10 years, you know, so time. she's, <clears throat> these years she's built these systems on how to manage patient documents, how to manage employee availability, how to manage the yeah. actual trucks or the crews or the shifts. And like this stuff is not something that someone could come in and do, yes. you know, in a year or yeah. two years, three years. It takes, so fortunately for me and her husband, we got in, we had access to of all my systems, all of her <laughs> systems and it made everything for us a lot easier. So uh, yeah, to answer your question and to finish what you were saying, Tiffany, yeah, it, it can be done semi-passively. Like, you know, Tiffany explained like at home, we both work from home. We both work on other businesses that we have, and yeah. uh, you know it can be done, but it, it only can be done if you have access to the appropriate processes and systems and resources right. to make that happen. So if you come with Influence Academy, or if you follow us on YouTube or Instagram or whatever, you know we talk about all these things. Yeah. But if not, you know you can definitely still on your own, you know, over time build out um, a, a system what that systems works for you. like right. Yeah. So I would and say like I do make money in my sleep. I don't know if we would call that passive, but I do make money while I'm on vacation. I do make money, you know, just while I'm not present at the business. And I think that was my goal. Like I wanted to find a way where I could be able to generate income. Um, I'm a mom of young children. Mm -hmm. I'm a wife. I want to be very present with them. And so that has been my goal. And this company or this type of business model has provided that type of lifestyle for me. So. So for the record, I just want, this is what I was gunning for. So even though it can be run semi-passively, um, you don't, you didn't, you don't do anything else unless you want to do something else. That's what I was going for. Um, you, this is your full-time thing. This is your business, your company, and it's providing a, a stable oh, income for oh, For sure. For sure. Yeah. That's what I was, that's the T that I, I didn't oh, that, want people to <laughs> miss. And no, you're great. You're great. You gave, again, they're giving y'all, they, they, this is good. Um, <laughs> but this is what I wanted. This is a business that is not a side hustle. Everybody's, this is a gig economy mm. and everybody's like looking for the next side hustle. This is not a side hustle, y'all. This is something that you have to commit to. And if you follow their steps, you follow their processes and, and again, keep that open mind to what they're teaching you, this can be it for you. You don't have to do something else. And that's why I wanted. So yeah. kudos, shout out, round of applause again. <laughs> O-M-G. <laughs> This is the tea I was looking for. Um, what do you do with your team? It, it has how has the pandemic treated your ambulance business? Has it slowed down? Has it increased? What do you do when you when you don't have as many calls? Do you work on training the team? What do you do then? We the the pandemic helped the business. <laughs> like I think we doubled <laughs> honestly during that time. And it's because people unfortunately got sicker. Yeah. Um and it also doubled because a lot of businesses went out of business um, based on various reasons. And so in my, I, we're in the metro Atlanta area. Um, people that are needing dialysis transport, that's increasing so, so much. From the time that I started my own business to now, I would say like I would market and market and market. And it would take, you know, it would just take a while for me to get called callbacks and now i would say we probably get calls four five times a week depending um on you know from several different facilities of people or you know that need ambulance transport and so the great thing again about the dialysis model is you're not your staff isn't usually sitting around unless you're just not doing any marketing or customer relations work um you know we want to make sure we are always at the top of um, our decision makers mind, whether it be social workers, nurses, mm -hmm. whomever. Yep. Um, so that means like we're showing our face or we have someone that is, you know, like one of our managers, um, they're showing their face. We are, you know, just always following up, making sure everybody's happy, etc. So if there's a time where our employees are sitting, it's probably because we are not doing our part as, um, you know, owners yep. and going out and getting to work. Cause the work is definitely, and the demand is definitely there for sure. So I love that I don't know if question or not, but it did. It did. Who calls you guys? Is it the hospitals? Um, do you have relationships? Do you have to have relationships with the 911 service um in your local community? Who calls you guys to 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 request work? Yeah, well, for us, because we focus on dialysis, um, 
most of the time it's the social worker or the administrator or the manager at a dialysis facility or dialysis yeah. clinic, you know, um, offering us, you know, not offering us, but, you know, asking us if we have space for a patient that needs to be um, brought to their treatment at a certain time on a certain day. Right. Um, in other instances, it can be like a case manager from like a hospital or, yeah. uh, you know, a social worker or a case manager from a nursing home yeah. who has a patient who's at that facility who now needs to be taken to dialysis yeah. at a specific time. Or it could be other things, not necessarily dialysis. It could be other appointments and stuff like that. Wound like care. Wound care. Um, you know, <clears throat> we have relationships and contracts with hospitals. These are... Um, you know, it could be a small hospital, it could be a large hospital, but think about it from, and this is not the dialysis model that I'm talking about now, but mm -hmm. just um, from a hospital standpoint, if they have people that are needing to get out of the hospital, but there's a delay in transporting them, that means they can't admit any new people to the hospital. Yep. So their mm -hmm. goal is to really um, expedite mm -hmm. <laughs> moving patients um, out of the hospital. So they really rely on... Um, a lot of times major ambulance services, mm -hmm. but oftentimes those major ambulance services cannot fill the need quick enough. Yep. And so then they begin to call smaller services um, like myself, or maybe we would have a, a direct relationship with the major ambulance service That's where they, yeah, as a subcontractor, where they call us directly and say, hey, we have six patients today that need to be discharged mm -hmm. from various hospitals around town. Can you guys help us? Mm -hmm. um, and so that it kind of, it's just about relationship building. For sure. A and lot of, yeah. Oh, no, no, relationships. Like that's yeah. what I, like in this space, and I kind of said this in another video we did a long time ago too. Like, you know, my background is in software, you know, and in software, you get, it's doing all that cold calling. You know, you mm -hmm. have to, you know, cold call, hey, I have this software, can you buy it? Like it help your business <laughs> save time and money, you know? And it's like, ah, no, nah, I, don't, I don't need that. I use something else, hang up, right? But in this space, you know, everyone is kind of working together to like, you know, yeah. help the patient or get the patient in a better situation. So it's like, right. you know, Grady calls, I have a patient, she needs help getting to dialysis or a facility calls, hey, she has an appointment, can you guys help? It's like, yeah, we can help. So it's all like, even when you introduce yourself, you walk into a facility, they don't know you. Like you introduce yourself, you, you, you know, correctly, you know, professionally, they'll be open to yeah. building a relationship with you. And once you build that relationship with the facility or a social worker or individual, like I've had people who are at one facility literally quit that job going to an entirely different company on another side of town yeah. <laughs> and she still gives me a call as right. we have that relationship so it's definitely a relationship based business and, and, go and to piggyback off that since we have a network here in atlanta of other ambulance owners that we work with when we can't do it we refer yeah. the business to one of our friends in mm -hmm. business so at the end of the day the the person that's calling with the need they know if they call tiffany or anthony we gonna, we're going to fulfill the need for them, even if, even if it isn't through our personal ambulance yeah. services. Um, so it's just really about relationships, having a network, um, and not, but not only that, making sure that when you say you're going to do something, you do it. Yeah. So you don't want to say, <laughs> say, oh yeah, yeah, we can, we can transport Miss such and such at this time. And then we are like three hours late. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want to call us again. So mm -hmm. it's just about making sure when we do get, get a call that we are honoring our word yeah. and, you know, having integrity, yeah. et cetera. So that was good. Too. You good. Uh, big heart. Boom. <laughs> big heart. Drop the mic. Y'all can drop the mic on that one. <laughs> 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 OMG. You guys have been incredible this entire episode. I am floored and I thank you guys. This is huge and <laughs> epic. Um, what would you say? Um, this is our, our, our bonus slam round. What would you guys say to that young boy, that young girl out in the audience that wants to get into a business, any business, but they, they're fearful, right? Fear can sometimes stifle us. What would you say if they're watching this episode right now? What would you say to that young boy, that young girl right now to encourage them to, to take action? I have a quick thing that I... I was gonna say scared money don't make a lane, but <laughs> that's such bad advice. But it's real. Um, I would say to definitely do your due diligence. That's, that's good. I think that's that mm -hmm. especially a business that requires a large upfront, upfront, I can, how do I say upfront it? Cost. Upfront mm -hmm. cost. Sorry. Yeah. You good? Um, a large startup. 
I think that it is really, really important to make sure um, you're doing your due diligence, whether that be through mentorship, making sure you're betting the people, because um, it's really hard, especially like on social media. Um, that's the thing I hate about social media. I'm like, <laughs> you really don't know. I mean, they could be like excellent marketing people and have like all these nice infographics mm -hmm. and look the part. They can speak, sound like they know what they're talking about, but you can't, You what do you check? You, exactly. what, how can you like that's good, that's fact check? You can't. Yeah. And so I've unfortunately spent money on some courses and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I could have looked this up in on Google or like they didn't really, really go deep and share any real information that was helpful. And so um, thankfully, you know, I didn't like spend $50,000 starting up or anything like that. But I think the major thing is just, you know, fact checking the people um, information that from. you get information <laughs> from. Um, yeah doing some legwork of your own maybe like i said um going and like sitting and people watching ambulance service watching seeing if this is something that you could see yourself doing um and then definitely praying like i'm very big i'm very i'm christian i believe that um you know God definitely directs our path. And if we pray, I think that he will give us a yes or give us a no or give us a wait. And so that's my jish on good. it. That was good. Um, brother. I had a couple of seconds to think. <laughs> so, yeah, <you're> all... <laughs> so that's why I let you go. I kind of like looked off to the side when you asked the question. Mark, so, but for, for me, that was, that was, that was definitely tactical for me. Mine would be kind of just like some mythical thing. Like, you know, just, I think everyone has a gift, like, even as a kid, like regardless of where you are in your life, you know, what hand life is kind of giving you, you have like something that's special. Like, yeah. And just like try to figure out what that is and like, like lean into it and utilize it. Like it's a superpower. Like my sister, she is so gifted at like being a tactician. Like she can come into a, a, a space or a business or whatever it is, like break down the exact proper way something is supposed to be done, yeah. create like a blueprint for that to be done and train whoever somebody off the street on how to do it and they're going to be able to replicate that day in and day out like that's a gift that's something that i literally cannot do like i just don't have the makeup to do that and like for me i have certain things and i know marcus you have certain things like obviously you're doing yeah. this podcast i don't know what your gift is but i'm sure it's definitely being reflected in you know how you built this platform yeah. so just like whatever that kid is whatever the individual is like use your gift like don't downplay it like <laughs> like yo use that as your superpower yeah. and leave with that and you'll go far yeah, for sure. For sure. Surround yourself with um, people in a higher space, higher mindset. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I was, yeah, it's exactly. Like my gift is like, like we're building this software. <laughs> like I don't have a software background, but we're like, I'm resourceful, like enough to like get people to help me with that. You know what I'm saying? But that's a long, no story for the day. I'm not going to go down that path because I know we've been long, but yeah, you can, you can get people to kind of fill in the rest, but whatever your gift is, put that at the top and like, you can get people to fill in the rest, yeah. man, for sure. Yeah. These two are a powerhouse. I told y'all, I told y'all, <laughs> they are the truth. I love them. I love them. You love them too. How can we connect with you? How can we grow with you? And the train has left the station, but it's not too late to get on board to Ambulance Academy. So how can people find you? Yeah, on uh, Instagram, uh, Ambulance Academy. So that's at Ambulance Academy on Instagram. On YouTube, it's also at Ambulance Academy. Um, that's the best way. Obviously, you can connect with us on our website. We actually have a free how to start your own ambulance company guide. Yes. <laughs> that's something that we have. So you can uh, access that at uh, ambulanceacademyonline.com. As soon as you type that in, um, you can just put an email address and like we literally send you over the guide. But the best way is to like just keep up with us is on Instagram and on YouTube. Like We give away so much information on this industry, information that you know, she didn't have when she started. So if yeah. someone is actually interested in the space but you know they need more information like hey youtube is is a gold mine for us yes and we do offer um a coaching slash mentorship program that we're launching in january yep. so if you guys are interested in that um you can send us a direct message via instagram mm -hmm. or via i think you can leave a drop a comment on our youtube and we will be able to connect with you guys there yep. as well there you go. There you have it, y'all. Stock them. Stock them. Like <laughs> I did. <laughs>
Yes. <laughs> Check them out. They are super, super powerful. I thank you all. I want to say this to you guys. You guys continue to do what you're doing. You guys are incredible. Don't ever quit because we need you. We need what you guys are doing. We need what you guys are giving back. Um, and that is powerful. And that is the marking of you can't go broke giving. And so right. thank you for what you guys do. Thank, thank you so much you for, for having us. us. Yeah. Thank this you has so been much. great. Yeah. This has been amazing. Absolutely. You all are amazing. I love you guys. I, I want to thank you all, my audience, for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this message was powerful. I hope it inspires you to get started today. It's not too late. You don't have to wait till New Year's to make your New Year's resolution. Make your New Year's resolution today and get started and start your own ambulance business with your great, great mentors that I found for you. You can find us on Art Radio, YouTube, Spotify, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you get your platform today. I want to end this show like I always end every show. Take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show, signing off, and the incredible, amazing Tiffany and Anthony Powell of Ambulance Academy, signing off. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>